Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another um, Geography King reaction. It's been, it's been a, it's been a bit of, a bit of time. It's been a few days, not a few days. It's been a bit of time. It's been a, it's been a long time since we've last reacted to his channel. That's that's what I'm gonna say. I always usually say, oh, it's been a month. It's been a month, but it hasn't been a month. I just don't know how to. Work. <laughs> oh, how is this an intro? And yeah, this one is examining interesting maps part three. I always. I love I love seeing these interesting maps about the US. I think they're one of the most enjoyable reactions for me because you get like geography mix of sort of like statistical sort of views at certain things, and I love stats and I love geography. So like the the combination is like porn for me. <laughs> what is happening here, boys and girls? What is happening? Here? Yeah, let's just get into this. Shout out to Geography King. I know a lot of you um, you watching these reactions like his channel, but if you haven't seen his channel or you haven't subscribed, links in the description to the video. And you can subscribe to his channel through there because his channel is very interesting. But yeah, let's just get into this one, man. I don't know what's happened in this intro. Quick shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter links in the description for those. Save my Patreon links all there. I recently reacted to the um, Super Bowl, Michael, Jack Michael Jackson, the Prince Super Bowl, and that was a banger of a one to see. But yeah, links to all there. Oh, links all there for those interested. Let's get into this one. Get my tea. Howdy, team, it's Kyle with part three of the Examining Interesting Map series where we're taking a look at some really cool depictions of geography of the U.S. and the world. And that's what a map is. It's, it's a visual depiction well. of geography. And many of the maps authors are credited. Many others are fair use and creative common. And some other ones are the ones I made myself. But either way, let's take a look at some really interesting it's maps. Nice these. Okay. This first map takes a look at broods of cicadas and when they emerge. And 2021 is going to be a pretty big year for cicadas. So Wait, the areas that are yellow. Cicadas, isn't that like? They're those. Aren't they like crickets? Oh shit! Oh shit! They're kind of like crickets, even though they're not crickets, because they're cicadas or whatever. But every seventeen years. Hello, we're gonna see a large number of these. Seventeen years cicadas. Wait, what? Things flying around. So for 2021, the area is highlighted in yellow, such as most of Indiana, western and southwestern Ohio, uh, parts of south central Pennsylvania, and portions of the Appalachians. They're going to see a big brood emerging. And these things are loud, and they go all night long. It's crazy. So I do a lot of camping in the summertime, and they, I mean, it can be hard to sleep at night when these things are just not. screaming all night. It's pretty crazy. And uh, down where I live, there's a lot of caves and a lot of bats. So Oh, my fucking God. The years are. that the, the broods emerge and they're large broods, the bats are just flying around just fat and happy because these cicadas are really slow and easy to get to. So the bats love cicadas, but we don't. This map shows the most commonly spoken language in a state that is not English or Spanish. Okay, so the ones you can't see is Alaska, Yupik, Tagalog, which I think people said, isn't that uh, Thailand or the Philippines? I swear people mentioned that to me before. Um... He's probably going to mention it, actually. So, the, yeah, that's um, Hawaii and Alaska. For Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Louisiana, French is actually the second most spoken language in the state ahead of Spanish. And in Alaska, the indigenous language Yupik is the second most spoken language in the state. For the plurality of states, German is the third most spoken language, but there really aren't that many German speakers in those states. It's not like you're going to go to an Applebee's in Montana and hear about people speaking German, but for all those states and that kind of a pinkish color, German is the third most spoken language. In California, Nevada, and Hawaii, the third most spoken language is Tagalog, which is a language native to the Philippines. Philippines. And along with Alaska, Arizona, New Mexico, and South Dakota are the states where the third most spoken language is indigenous. In states like Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Washington, and Minnesota, Vietnam. it's indicative of refugees coming over from oh, Vietnam wow. during and after the Vietnam War. So overall, this is a pretty interesting map to show where immigrants from different parts of the world have gone to different parts of the world. Arabic as well in um, uh, Michi Michigan. Yeah, in Michigan. Wait, yeah. Wait, Michigan. Did you yeah, Michigan. This is Michigan, right? I don't even know if I'm waffling now. Um, you've got Korean here, you've got Italian, which isn't a surprise, Chinese. Bro, it just varies so much. The UK would be nothing like this. It would be nothing like this. Again, but like you said, I guess some of these, it's like the second most spoke language or the third most spoke language is, but it's like a lot of the people in these places still wouldn't speak this language, if it makes sense. 
in a related map, this one shows what Hispanic group other than Mexican is the largest in each state. So no surprise that for most of the country it's going to be Puerto Rican, being that Puerto Rico is part of the U.S., but you also have quite a few Salvadoran immigrants in California, Nevada, and Texas specifically, but also Arkansas, Virginia, and Maryland. It's kind of hard to tell, but Rhode Island is the only state in the country where Dominican is the largest Hispanic group after Mexican. So this is an important map because you'll often hear the term Hispanic as if it's one giant group, but there are a lot of different uh, nationalities and ethnic yeah, groups that make up the term true. Hispanic. And similarly, this is a map that shows the largest Asian group in each state. And just Filipino in both Alaska and Hawaii. Just like Hispanic, the term Asian covers a lot of different groups of people from many different countries. And it generally only refers to East and Southeast Asia, but this map also does include India. Western Asia is mostly Arabs and other white folks, so that's not counted as a separate racial group. So it's interesting to note that Korean and Japanese are the only two Asian groups that have a large number of people in the U.S., but are not the largest group in any state. So the last of the ethnic maps I'm going to show is a map of Europe that shows which U.S. state has the largest percentage of the population from that country. Oh, shit. So Utah is the U.K., Massachusetts is Ireland. He's probably going to read it out something. So, for example, Russia is the largest country depicted on this map. It's the big purple one at the York. east end. And New York is the state with the largest percentage of the population that is Russian. So for the most part, it's what you would expect. The Scandinavian and Nordic countries are North Dakota and Minnesota, uh, Irish in Massachusetts, uh, Portuguese in Rhode Island, Italians in Rhode Island. Um, so nothing too surprising. I mean, I think Utah for Denmark is a little surprising, but for the most part, it's New Mexico for Spain, Rhode Island. Basically Portugal. what you'd expect. And here's a piece of trivia for you. A lot of folks from Luxembourg emigrated to Iowa. So it's interesting to see how immigrants from Europe, how they chose to go to certain places and while a country right next to it might have gone to a totally different state. This map is the result of a survey in which people were asked, what other country do you view most favorably? So for example, in the US, you'll see a Canadian flag and that means Canada was the number one choice for when Americans were asked, what country do you view most favorably? This is a really cool Whoever Canada did not. Oh, and the UK is Canada. That's pretty cool. Return well. the favor. So there are some pretty interesting relationships here, like Germany and France are now apparently best friends. Uh, most of Southern Africa uh, views South Africa the best, but South Africa itself views Namibia the best. Australia and New Zealand are buddies. So with how all the countries surrounding South Africa are all like, in love with it. Argentina like, and Uruguay are buddies. Mexico is asking for a different neighbor to the north. And for Americans, well, we got Colombia, the Philippines, and South Korea. That's our crew. This is a map of the United Kingdom Ooh, that, shout the UK that shows guns. the favorability of the monarchy. Well, you can tell pink is people who don't really care about the monarchy. Green is people who care, right? There's no legend with this map, but the areas that are pink and purple have a negative view of the monarchy. Yeah, it's so weird how in the UK it's, there's so, it's so much more positive than negative. Because everyone I know, 90% of the people that I know don't care for the monarchy. It's a weird one. I guess it's just the people you know about, the people you surround yourself with. And areas that are green have a positive view of it. So it's really easy to pick out the border between England and Scotland with all of yeah. Scotland <laughs> viewing the monarchy negatively and the areas just south of that in England viewing it favorably. In the west central portion of the country is Wales, which also views the monarchy negatively. In the southeastern portion of England, you can see some purple cluster there. It's kind of hard to see, but that's London and the suburbs. Yes, yeah, And the other London. pink dots throughout most of central England are the other major cities, kind of industrial cities like Liverpool, Leeds, and Manchester. So it appears as though people in rural, more conservative England support the monarchy, but everybody else in the UK doesn't. Yeah, this little spot here is Norwich, and you can see Norwich. And this also white. shows a pretty good correlation with who supported Brexit and who didn't, with Scotland, Wales, and the big cities of England being against it, but the smaller rural parts of England were for Brexit. And this map clearly shows why there's a renewed movement in Scotland to break free from the UK and be its own independent country. This is a pretty sad map for Americans, I think. It shows the minimum mandatory paid vacation days by country. So this shows that the vast majority of countries in the world, full-time workers get mandatory paid vacation with the one huge exception being the US. And not only are there many, many Americans that get Why no vacation. My... This is covering my screen. I can't see the bottom ones. Um, so 23 days, 28 days is the dark, this one. 11 to 15 days is this one, and that's it. 
Okay, thank God for that. I couldn't see it. Vacation time at all. Many of the ones that do don't use it. I've never really understood why so many Americans are proud That's to not true. use their vacation days as if it's a badge of honor. So if you're an American that is fortunate enough to actually get vacation days, use them. Even if you don't actually go anywhere. But people have said to me like, it's like they do it, they don't basically because money. And that's such a sad sort of reason behind it, but it's understandable as well, man. Life's tough and when you've got to work every single day of the year. I had people telling me that they work literally every single day of the year. That is unreal to me. That like blows my mind. You, I mean, I respect it. Like I respect it so, so much, but it's just like, fuck me, man. I couldn't. We're just sleep in work. every day for a week. It'll be good for you. This map shows life expectancy throughout the US and Canada. And there's a pretty strong correlation between poverty and bar weekends. Obviously, people don't know. So life expectancy, but... which is probably to be expected with Some the states that are uh, colored in red and purple being the ones with the lowest life expectancy. And the same was true for Canada as well. Canada overall has a higher life expectancy than the US, but Quebec's the portions highest. of Arctic Canada tend to have the lowest life expectancy with Nunavut at only 71 years. So you might notice a pretty stark shift from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana into Texas. And the reason for that is the portions of Texas along the Mexican border is the part of the state that has the longest life expectancy. So that's the part of the state that's bringing up the total number, even though oh. the rest of Texas would be pretty much like Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. That's wild. In a related map, this takes a look at the places in the world that have the largest number of people that live to be over 100. So you'll see a pretty good cluster right around the Mediterranean with Spain, France, and Italy all being represented on this map. And this part of the world has some of the best climate on earth, kind of like the California coast. And I've said this in a bunch of videos, the physical geography, the climate of your region has a huge effect on your health. People in California are healthier and less obese and they live longer. That's the same way you get in the Mediterranean where you have wealthy countries with a nice climate, people are gonna live longer. Oh, and wow. it's also interesting to note that Japan is pretty well known for having a lot of people to live to be over 100. And I believe it has the longest life expectancy of any country on earth. And look at the U.S. Hawaii is a state with the longest life expectancy. And Hawaii also has a large percent of the population that is of Japanese descent. And speaking of Hawaii, so this is a map that shows the there. Hawaiian island chain. Yeah. The part that's blown up in the southeastern are the islands that stick out above the water. And this is what we know as the state of Hawaii. But the rest of the chain is huge. It goes on for a very long way. And the vast majority of these are mountains that are under the surface of water. So you don't see them, but they are large mountains under the sea. What the fuck? This map shows the state of marijuana legalization in the U.S. as of April 2021. This will definitely be changing over the years for sure. I think they're starting to make it legal in the U.K. now, finally. I mean, it's been a long time. But again, Alaska and Hawaii, where Alaska's legal... And decriminal, decriminal, decriminalized, decriminal, decriminalized, decriminalized is um, Hawaii, just for those who can't see. So the week before I posted this video, both New York and New Mexico legalized marijuana, which makes it 16 states plus D.C. to have it legalized. The states highlighted in dark green are states where it's legal and it's regulated kind of like alcohol. The states that are light green are where it's, it's illegal, but you won't get arrested for it. You'll get a ticket. So it'll be kind of like a like a speeding ticket or a noise ordinance or an open container. I forgot the color in Delaware, but Delaware would be light green. The state's colored in peach or orange or whatever you would call that are ones where it's illegal, but you'll probably just do a maybe a few days in jail and have a relatively small fine, but not go to prison. And the states highlighted in red are the ones where even with a small amount of marijuana, you're going to prison and you're going to pay a huge fine. And of course, this is just how it is on the books. I'm not sure how it works in practice if you're going to actually go to prison for having a small amount of marijuana in Texas or wherever, but this is what it's actually... Is it for selling it or is it just for carrying it? That's an interesting the books. question, actually. But it's worth noting that with New Mexico and New York joining the ranks of legal states, there are now more states where marijuana is legal than states where you're going to go to prison for having what a small amount. What's the first amount. state? California, and by right? the end of 2021, both Virginia and Hawaii will probably be dark green. Wow. This is a map that shows the results of a study that was completed in March 2021. It takes a look at the median house value for new construction only and compares that to the wages of the state. So as you can see, for pretty much throughout the entire country, fewer than half of the people can afford a new home. Now again, these are only for brand new homes. This is not the overall median house value of the state. And so some of these numbers in some of these eastern and southeastern states might look kind of high, but they're pretty much right on because where we live in Chattanooga, 
new houses, new construction are going for upper 200s, well into the 300s, and Nashville is even more expensive. So this map shows just how ridiculously expensive housing has gotten across the entire U.S. over the past few years. And people always talk about California and New York, but it's happening throughout the entire country. I'm certainly no housing expert. I'm not going to pretend to be one, but as a casual observer, I'm kind of worried we're headed for another housing bubble burst like we had in like 07 and 08. I can't see how these prices are going to be sustainable. So does that mean all the house prices just drop loads then? I guess that's what it means, right? And speaking of expensive real estate, here's a map of Atlantic City, New Jersey that shows the, the streets from the Monopoly board game overlaid on it. I oh, think a shit. pretty good chunk of people are familiar with Monopoly and the color of the streets on the map correspond to the colors on the board game itself. I think the game was like 100 years old, so I'm pretty sure the real estate stuff has changed. And Atlantic City is, for the most part, kind of a rough city, but it is kind of cool to see the Monopoly street names and, you know, depicted on an actual map of Atlantic City. And this is the last map I'm going to show. It is a truly gorgeous map, a wonderful piece of cartography. I love this thing. I love to get this thing blown up. So I'm guessing it's like the mountains are the higher points and the lower sort of points. have on that wall. And so this is obviously a relief map of the contiguous U.S. and shows some pretty cool geology on here. And forests. So I've mentioned this in a bunch of videos, and there's a huge difference between the east and the western U.S., and this map shows it very clearly. The Appalachian Mountain Range in the eastern U.S. is also very visible. Visible, but not quite as easy to see as the Ozark Plateau of southwestern Missouri, northwestern Arkansas, and southeastern Oklahoma. And you can also see just how flat the Gulf Coast is, and especially Florida. But also a very interesting obvious feature is where I'm from, the Central Valley of California. It's a giant flat valley surrounded by mountains. And it's oh, really shit. obvious to see on a map like this. So this is just a really wonderful map that highlights the variations of geology throughout the contiguous U.S. So there you have it, part three of examining interesting maps. And I love doing these videos because looking at maps like this is basically what I do for half of my free time anyway. So it's a lot of fun looking at these and I hope you enjoy looking at these maps too. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And yeah, shout out man, honestly, please give him a like if you haven't already, because this video was another banger and I just love watching these videos. They're so fun to see. I love geography and I love stats. It's just, just the perfect combo, man. And from do, for him doing the research again, show him some love for that. Get him to 94K. I mean, he's probably going to get to it on his own anyway, but yeah, if you can help get to 94K, that would be appreciated. Nothing makes my day like, howdy, it's Kyle. Howdy, it's Kyle here. <laughs> I like that comment. I watched this whole series with my girlfriend who strongly thought it wouldn't be any fun, but she gave me a chance and she ended up pausing again and again to read more and look up extra facts. Excellent job. 410. Friendship ended with Canada. Now South Korea is the best friend. Not the free call we deserve, but the free call we needed. That relief map is stunning. I would pay quite a bit to have that on my wall. Yeah, that it is a cool map. I love seeing things like that. The UK would just be fucking... Let's get to it. The UK would just be like Florida, man. I swear to you, the whole of the UK would just be like Florida. <laughs> that final relief map also shown the weather channel running from Texas to the Arctic. Kyle, I plan to travel to the US when I retire. Your videos are helping me plan trips. Yeah, man, that's a dream. I mean, lockdown in the UK, it's finally over today. I'm going to the gym today for the first time in months. I can't fucking wait. I'm in such a good mood. Life's good again. Thank you for everything. Please just don't have another outbreak of the virus. I want to do so much in the summer and in the coming months. And just, oh my God, everything's good again. Let's go. Hopefully you enjoyed. Until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.